up guys, Game that here, and welcome back to some more Madden 16 Ultimate Team. And we are back, getting ready to continue into our new season with this incredible team that we debuted in the last episode. And I mean, in case you guys missed it, it was a good one, because this team is just way too good, and they are a force to deal with, offense and defense. I mean, especially offense, they just constantly put up touchdown after touchdown. And as you can see it, last time out, we ended up getting the 3-0. We got three wins, and we already avoided the level demotion, so next step is to try to get back to the playoffs. We need three more wins for that, and I think we can do it. I mean, of course the goal is to get the first round by, but, you know, let's take it step by step and take it easy and, you know, at first just try and get to the playoffs. So we're starting things off in our first game playing against the Seattle Seahawks. This is, you know, a division game for the Rams in real life, but first and ten for my opponent. He is starting out on offense, and, of course, he's already going to the drag route with the tight end. And going with the no huddle. So, six, second and six now. Decided to go with some man coverage. And, yeah. That was my job to cover him. And I'm already letting off a first down. A few plays later, though, third and one. Look at me blitzing right through with Michael Kendricks to stop that. And, I mean, of course. He's going no huddle. I don't think anybody in this world punts on Madden. He's going to the little quick route again with his tight end. I'm not sure how he held on to that, but he is converting. Pick it up the first. A few plays later, he's back on another fourth down. It's a fourth and nine for him now. Richard Sherman, man. That's your man coverage right there. I'm pretty sure he's got like a 97 man coverage somewhere up in that range. And he's letting up that reception. That shouldn't be happening. So second and six, Julian Edelman on the out route. Picking up a first down. Actually picking up 17 yards on that play. So first and 10 now. I saw the screenplay coming, man. I was just on a defensive lineman. I couldn't get there in time. And Devontae Freeman is going in on the screen, putting my opponent up 7 to nothing early on in this game. So we're at the end of the first quarter now. Second from 10 now for us. We're going to go with a little bit of a play action to find Brandon Marshall. Look at this guy making people miss, breaking off tackles. If he would have just broken off one more tackle, that dude would have been gone. And already we're getting a nice reception going for us on offense. A few plays later on a third and two. This is just too easy for Marshall Falk to just, you know, to give him a toss play, use that speed to get to the outside. He gets the easy touchdown. Didn't take us very long to score, and we are already tying things up again. 7-7, seven to seven, and we are looking pretty good here. So, my opponent's next offensive possession. It's a 3rd and 10 already for him. He does have all-rookie Jameis Winston back there, so he's looking to take a shot deep. Just, I really don't understand this game. Like, can we please not put aggressive catch in next year's Madden? Charles Woodson against Amari Cooper. Don't really know how that even happens because I don't think that would actually happen in real life. But we get the sack on third down, fourth and 19 now. For some reason, my opponent is going for it again, even though, you know, he should take his three points because he is in field goal range. So fourth and 19, I see it coming across the middle with Julie Edelman. Thank goodness. Dante Whitner was there to hit Julian Edelman, which forced him to drop the ball and not let up a touchdown. So that was huge right there. First and 10, going back to another play action. And this dude is just incredible, man. He is one of the best receivers I've ever played with. Brandon Marshall, he's just crazy good. I mean, like I said, this guy is just an absolute monster he catches everything and let me tell you if you guys have enough coins please go buy yourself a team of the year Brandon Marshall because the dude is an absolute freak of nature and he catches everything that comes his way and he's definitely one of my favorite receivers I've ever played with because the guy is just he's so good so that's exactly what I wanted to do I want to score at the end of the first half come back out on offense at the start of the second half try and score again and go off by two touchdowns so Third and two there with Wes Walker. You guys see him making a couple of guys miss, getting a crazy good reception. Second and ten now. Look at Vernon Davis tippy toeing his way down the sideline, able to stay in bounds and get ourselves that touchdown. Exactly what I said. And going up by two scores, making this a 21 to 7 game. And things are definitely looking pretty good for us now. So my opponent's next offensive possession. He's already with a second and ten. You guys see it. I'm there with DRC, but. I just was too short, man, and watching this play back, it makes me angry because I should have had the user pick there. I'm just not that good with my user skills, man. I just need to get better with them. 
and learn to, you know, get to the play where it's developing a little bit earlier. Because I saw that play happening with Julian Edelman. I should have had the user pick. I just, you know, need to work on my user skills. But third and goal, even though I know it's going to be a quarterback sneak, that's just one of those things to Madden. You just can't stop it. So Jameis Winston dies forward for the touchdown. My opponent is right back in this. It is now a 21-14 to 14 game. But we've got the ball. We have a chance to go up another score and make it even harder for my opponent to come back. So on the screen play with Marshall Falk, look at that wide open hole my offensive lineman gave me to go through. So second and nine. Again, this play is just, it's money. Every time it's going to work, Vernon Davis on that sideline route. He's picking up another first down, and my opponent is completely against the clock now. A minute and a half left, third and one. He's looking to do an all-out blitz. But again, one of those things, it's so hard to defend. Full back dive, Lorenzo Neal picks up the first down, and it looks like my opponent doesn't even want to call his timeout. He's just going to take the L there. It looks like we are walking out of here in week four with another victory, 21-14 to game. A pretty solid performance by my offense and defense in general. Not really any turnovers that happened, but look, as long as we get the win, that's really all that matters. I don't care about anything else, so jumping straight into week number five now, trying to go 5-0. and We are playing home once again. This time it is against the Carolina Panthers. So Devin Hester on the kickoff return. We are starting things off on offense at this game. Now, let's go into our first offensive play and see what we are working with. Second and 11, Aaron Rodgers. I'm looking towards Brandon Marshall again because the guy's just too good. Look at him. Trucking those three defenders forward, picking up a first down, getting a 13-yard reception to start things off. First and 10, the next play. Again, the play is just going to work all the time. Vernus Davis on that out route. He's giving us another first down. And with a 93-speed tight end, it's just it's too easy with the guys. So third and four, a couple of plays later. I'm looking to go to Brandon Marshall again on the play action, but even though... I have five offensive linemen, and my opponent only sent two people after me. Somehow with 5-0 linemen and two defenders, I still end up getting sacked. So I was frustrated. Fourth and 12, I decided to go for it. My opponent, I can't lie, he played that beautifully. He put man coverage on the tight end. He knew exactly where I was looking to go, and he defended that at the best possible way that you could have. So turnover on downs, unfortunately. Look at this guy, Michael Floyd. I don't know who this guy thinks he is. First of all, he was completely wide open. I don't know who was supposed to be there to not let up that reception, let alone the guy broke like two or three tackles afterwards. So first and 10 now for my opponent. Taking a shot to the back of the end zone. DRC had some terrible, terrible coverage there, man. And I just don't know what is up with my secondary. Because, I mean, you guys saw it in the last game. Charles Woodson letting up that crazy reception against Amari Cooper. That shouldn't happen. It still does. So things just went downhill from here my offensive line was just non-existent and I don't know what was happening with these guys I mean back-to-back -back sacks I just don't have any time to do anything plus none of my receivers were open I don't know what my defense or my opponent's defense was running but nobody was getting open my offensive line just decided you know take an easy day off and I had to punt my opponent the ball he drove all the way down the field even though I knew he was going to that out route with Travis Kelsey I was there with Ray Lewis but again that's just one of those plays I'm not that good with my user, and I was just way too short, and I should have been able to stop that, but, I mean, as you guys saw it, I couldn't. So, our next offensive possession, what happens? The offensive line, man. I, I just don't know what is happening. Besides the fact that this game was stupid laggy, I couldn't get anything going for me, especially calling the plays, man. The call of the plays was just absolutely pathetic in its own, but fourth and five, you guys are going to see here at its best. Look at this. Did you see the lag? I thought Larry Fitzgerald was going to be able to break away from the defender there, but because of the lag, I couldn't see if it was actually going to happen or not. We throw another incomplete pass on fourth down, another turnover on downs, and things are just not looking so hot right now. Third and two. I mean, Dante Whitner didn't even react to the ball. And at the end of the second half, I mean, my opponent was up 21 to nothing. He would have gotten the ball right back. And, I mean, with that lag and the way that my offense and defense was playing, things were not looking so good. You know what? I will take the loss that week. It's all good. I just don't know what was up with that game. My offensive line, like I said before, they just they weren't even there. And the lag was another factor. So, it's all good. I will take the loss. It's not a big deal. We're going to jump right here into our next game. This is week six now. And third and two... You know, I said earlier, it's so hard to stop a fullback dive. Look at my defensive line there. Plowing forward, able to stop 
the fullback dive, and surprisingly, my opponent actually punted the ball. That's like the first time I've seen someone punt me the ball in a very long time, man. But third and three, the play, like I said before, it's just way too good, works all the time. Vernon Davis on the out route. If it's not broke, don't fix it because Vernon Davis on the out route with 93 speed going against probably a linebacker who's going to cover him every single time. Like I said, with 93 speed, it's just an unfair matchup, and the dude is going to get at least like a 20-yard reception, if not a touchdown, every single time that play is ran. So third and five now for my opponent, his next offensive possession. You saw that first down on the four vertical. So with the third and five, Donovan McNabb is able to scramble out of the pocket, get a 10-yard rush, keep things alive going for him, picking up the first. But a couple of plays later on the 10-yard line now, third and two for him. He's going with the drag route to the tight end, who is able to fall forward into the end zone and my opponent strikes back very quickly tying this game up at seven apiece and things are right back to a tie ball game now so for our next possession can you guys guess what i'm going to do for the first play third and 12 we need 12 yards so what am i going to do i'm going to look to vernon davis on that out route because like i said it's just going to work all the time so first and 10 now the next play i see west walker on the sideline he makes one guy miss he makes a second guy miss, and look at Wes Welker using that speed, making two guys miss, dive for air, and use that speed to get all the way to the end zone. A beautiful touchdown, man. Great play by Wes Welker, giving us the 14-7 game now, and we are right back on top by touchdown. So, for my opponent's next possession, second and 10 for him. Not only does Richard Sherman get burnt on this play by Michael Irvin, Reggie Nelson, I don't know what he was diving for, but it only took my opponent one play to come out on offense with the long touchdown to Michael Irvin. And he strikes back, and it is now a 14-14 to 14 game. I mean, defense, I don't know what they're doing, but it wasn't what I wanted them to do. So first and 10 now, beautiful throw on the run by Aaron Rodgers to Larry Fitzgerald, finally getting this guy going, getting some catches on our team. A few plays later now, we are on a third and four. We've got 50 seconds left in the second quarter, so I'm going to go with a screen play. Thomas Rawls checks into the game. He's breaking to the outside, jukes to the inside. Are you kidding me? Look at that play by Thomas Rawls, the back up running back to come in, put on a juke move, not only again make all of those guys miss, that was just an incredible play to come in as a backup, giving us the touchdown. And again, we're striking back very quickly again. Up by touchdown, it is now 21 to 14. Things are looking pretty good. Second and 18 for my opponent, though. He's got a little bit of time left. Richard Sherman, you know, just decided to headbutt that ball. Don't ask me why he didn't even put his hands up, because that would have been a pick six all the way. Fourth and 18, no time left on the clock. No catch was made, thankfully, on that Hail Mary. And I was going to say, we're going into the second half with not only the lead and we we're going to get the ball back on offense, but my opponent quit right after that. And I mean, what an odd time to rage quit because I mean, he definitely was not out of that game. I don't know what that was about, but you know what? A win's a win. I will take it. We are now 5-1 and one on the season. I would have liked to have, you know, been 6-0, and oh, but that one game where the lag was just screwing me over completely, plus my O-line, don't know what they were doing that game, but it's all right. 5-1, and one, we definitely can still make the playoffs and get a first round bye, but thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy, please be sure to let me know by leaving a like, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new, and I will catch you all in the next one. Take it easy, guys. Peace. <laughs>